The latest on whether children will have the coronavirus vaccine in Wales, that's next. On Tuesday's Wales at 6, a dis Good evening, I'm Ellie Pitt. It has been confirmed that the coronavirus vaccine will be offered to all 12 to 15 year olds in Wales. The announcement by Welsh Government follows the recommendation from the UK's four chief medical officers that the rollout will help reduce disruption in schools and benefit those growing up in the poorest areas. But will it work and who should decide who gets it? Our reporter Charon Preet Kera has been looking at what this means for children and their families. Now, in the last few hours, there's been an unexpected joint statement issued from the Welsh Labour government and Plaid Cymru. In it, the two parties have announced an ambitious cooperation agreement to work together to deliver for Wales. Well, our national correspondent Rob Osborne is here. Rob, this is a bit out of the blue, isn't it? Welsh politics. Okay. But in May's election, there wasn't really any talk of this. So what's the reaction been like this afternoon? Well, if you're Jane Dodds, she's the leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats. She's the men, no doubt. Well, I look forward to watching that, Rob. Thank you very much for now. An additional £48 million is to be spent on social care across Wales to help the sector cope with ongoing pressures and challenges. Although the cash... Although it's just a few months since we've come out of lockdown, for many small companies, business is finally getting back on track. But one community in Cardiff has been hit one by one in an ongoing spate of break-ins. Police are investigating, although at this stage no arrests have been made. Our correspondent Richard Morgan has the story. But first, a family who feared they could be forced to leave their home and lose the land they farm in the Vale of Glamorgan has been given a reprieve after plans for a business park were rejected last night. The decision comes as calls grow for more protection to be given to tenant farmers in Wales. More than a quarter of farmers here don't actually own the land they work on and many say it's getting harder to keep their homes and businesses as our rural affairs correspondent Hannah Thomas now reports. Now, it might not feel it, but September is actually the warmest month for sea swimming. And two women from Port Talbot have set up a women's group to introduce dip days for those who'd like to give it a try. The Aquaholics meet every week at Aberavon Beach, where they've built up a strong community to help each other with their mental health and body positivity. Kelsey Redmore is there for us this evening and has joined them. Kelsey, have you uh, dipped your toe in? For any classical dancer, the opportunity to perform with the Royal Ballet is just about as good as it gets. And for Joe Palmain, his debut with the company meant even more because he has become the first ever wheelchair dancer to perform with them. Well, Joe is here now and can tell us a little bit more about your part in the Paralympics homecoming ceremony. What was it like performing on the night, Joe? Oh, uh, program. Wow. Um, so you try and see what happens. Really. And here you are now, and performing in front of thousands of people. What do you hope your performance as part of that ceremony will lead to and, and mean? What did it feel like to perform in front of a live audience again and see all those faces sort of looking back at you? Yeah. It, it, yes, tonight as well. Thank, thank you. you. Well, uh, that's uh, Joe, who's joined me there in the studio. But you're watching Wales at six and a reminder of our top story, the coronavirus. One by one, theatres across Wales are reopening to the buzz and expectation of more and more people getting the chance to see their favourite shows again. Well, tonight, for one night only, the Rocky Horror Show at Venue Cymru has had a very special guest at rehearsals. How's it been there this afternoon then, Rob? <laughs> That's all for now. Enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.